so we have learned about the histology of lymph node and spleen and lymph node and spleen are considered as secondary lymphoid structure so these secondary lymphoid structures are where the lymphocytes get activated uh, on antigen presentation so this also includes a mucosa associated lymphatic tissues so the mucosal lining or the inner lining which are seen in uh, gastrointestinal tract respiratory tract and genito urinary tract so these are the common sites of invasion by pathogens since these are uh, open uh, in, to the external environment so in order to protect these lining from the pathogens so the mucosa have a diffuse a large collection of lymphocytes in the mucosa <clears throat> and these are collectively called as malt mucosa associated lymphatic tissues so when you see these uh, lymphocytes they are uh, diffusely dispersed in the uh, within the epithelial lining uh, means you know that mucosa includes the epithelial lining then uh, then there is lamina propria muscularis interna so you can see these uh, lymphocytes they are diffusely dispersed most of them but some might form an aggregate to form a large structure which can include uh, uh, under this can, we can include the tonsils which are mainly present <coughs> uh, uh, on the posterior aspect of the oral cavity and the nasopharynx then it also includes spheres patches which are present in the uh, ileum uh, which is a part of the small intestine and also it includes appendix which is the which is present uh, in the large intestine so collectively uh, this malt will form the form one of the largest lymphoid organ uh, which comprises of 70% of body's immune cells so what type of cells it consists of so majorly it consists of b cells then t helper cells predominates in this lymphatic tissue so along with b cells and t helper cells you can, you can also see the plasma cells that is iga secreting uh, plasma cells then antigen presenting cells so all these are the components of uh, mucosa associated lymphatic tissue so in this picture you can see uh, the mucosa of esophagus and the colon which are the parts of gastrointestinal tract so beneath the lining uh, esophagus again it is lined by stratified squamous epithelium so beneath the lining you can see the lymphatic tissue uh, and even in the colon you can see been, uh, you, you are seeing the aggregation of lymphatic tissue so this these two pictures gives the example of malt uh, present in the gastrointestinal tract so the one more uh, i i told there are two types most of them they form a they are present diffusely dispersely they are distributed uh, along the tract uh, you know, the respiratory tract or gastrointestinal tract or genito urinary tract but there are some uh, lymphatic uh, tissue mucosa associated lymphatic tissue which aggregates to form a structure a large structure so one of the example i gave is the tonsil and uh, i also gave uh, the other example was space patches in ileum then appendix so here uh, i'm talking about the tonsil so tonsil is also a malt structure it's a type of malt structure present posteriorly uh, forming a ring a, a ring uh, around the oropharynx and uh, nasopharynx so uh, so the picture so tonsil includes there are different types of tonsil one is palatine tonsil lingual tonsil and pharyngeal tonsil so the picture is mainly showing the palatine tonsil which is present on either side of the post uh, at the posterior aspect of the oropharynx so here you can see uh, in a hnd staining the tonsil the main um, features as i mentioned it's a it's a, a malt mucosa associated lymphatic tissue so what are the identifying features so one is the epithelium so there you see stratified squamous epithelium then the other identifying feature is the presence of invaginations okay so there are those invaginations are called as epithelial invagination so those are called as scripts so it's uh, labeled over there tonsillar scripts so these are the invagination which are uh, densely infiltrated with lymphatic tissue okay so you can see lots of lymphocytes so these are the two main identification identifying feature for a tonsil so one is epithelium stratified squamous epithelium and presence of tonsillar scripts <coughs> 
and as you go deeper you can see lots of uh, limb, uh, aggregation of lymphatic tissue so those are called as lymph follicles or lymphatic nodules so the other one is showing in a higher magnification so it's mainly focusing on the uh, lymphoid tissue oh, so this is about the palatine tonsil so whenever there is uh, you, uh, you have seen you have uh, heard a condition called has tonsillitis okay so tonsillitis uh, which is very common in children so whenever they come across with the pathogens so these tonsils get enlarged okay uh, sometimes it will it might be full uh, filled uh, with the pus so this is very common in uh, small children <coughs> so all the pictures i have downloaded uh, from these two websites thank you